Sports News at 4 starts now. Right now at 4, Irma's devastation. Just looking at the powerful and deadly storm level homes throughout the Caribbean. And the latest track shows it could pose a danger to our area in the Georgia coast. People here are preparing. They're filling up sandbags on Tiny Island. That, as Governor Nathan Deal announces evacuation orders, our state has not been hit by a Category 3 storm since 1898. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chairman Reed. And I'm Ben Swan. The governor ordered mandatory evacuations along the coast to start on Saturday. Governor Nathan Deal extended the state of emergency to more counties today. There are now 30 counties under a state of emergency as the storm approaches. Look at the map. Here are those counties. The order authorizes Georgia National Guard members to be on active duty to help people respond and recover. Mandatory evacuations begin Saturday morning for areas east of I-95. That includes the city of Savannah. Now, during the evacuation, all lanes of Interstate 16, they'll be moving westbound. And mass evacuations are already underway right now in Florida. Take a this live look right here. A traffic jam in the city of Leesburg in central Florida. It's near the Florida Turnpike. People started leaving yesterday ahead of the storm, and so many of them are heading here to metro Atlanta. We're seeing devastating images, though, of Irma's damage in the Caribbean. Take a look at some of these pictures here. Video showing homes obliterated on at least one tiny island there of Barbuda. According to the prime minister, at least 60% of people on, on that island are now homeless. 60%. Irma is being blamed for at least 10 deaths in the Caribbean. We have a team of reporters covering every angle of this big story. We begin tracking Irma, though, with CBS 46 Chief Meteorologist Paul Osman. Paul, what is the latest? Well, the latest is it's still a very dangerous storm. It went down to 175 mile per hour sustained winds, but it is still very massive, and it's moving over water again, so it will maintain strength at least as a Category 4 or 5 as it moves closer to the southeast, moving to the west-northwest at around 16 miles per hour. The big question that I've been talking about all week is when does it get the turn to the north? That will decide the impact on Irma over Florida, over the Bahamas, and here in Georgia. This is the latest from the Hurricane Center. As a Category 5 storm, still moving toward uh, the Miami-Fort Lauderdale area by Saturday night and into Sunday, rides up the coast and makes another landfall, possibly near Tybee Island, right near Savannah, Hilton Head area, as a Category 3. So that would be a major hurricane. And all the way up through the Carolinas, weakening as an area of low pressure. That's one area. Here's what we call those spaghetti models. And this has changed in the last 24 hours. Most of these were offshore. Now they're bringing it more consistently over the Miami area. But there is so much uncertainty about this track. Either way, 10 miles to the east, 10 miles to the west, could have an impact to the Bahamas or maybe to the southwestern corner or the Florida Keys. Of course, we're keeping up with the track and the latest developments with it and how it's going to impact our weather. We'll have more of that coming up in less than 10 minutes.